G'day and welcome to Skillcapped. We're trying something a little different today. 2024 is going to be a crazy year for Warcraft and we're very much in the calm before the storm. That's a lot of reason for you to be excited, but for your humble content creators, it poses a serious challenge. Season 3 is very settled, there's nothing really to talk about. The War Within is ages away, nothing to talk about there. And even Season 4 has like an avant-garde release schedule where there's nothing to talk about on that front either. So you know what that means? It's time for a cynical filler episode. But like, you know, as far as these things go, I thought that eight old dungeons that I'd want to see in the War Within, I thought that was a great idea. So much so that I didn't really think about it. Like, you know, I had it pitched and approved without really picking any dungeons. So after the meeting, I immediately pulled up a list and within about 60 seconds, I produced this list of candidates. Do you see the problem? That's right, there isn't one. It's a good list made up of popular dungeons. It's safe. A 20 minute video explaining why these dungeons are good would be a nightmare to watch. And perhaps more importantly, it would be a nightmare for me to have to write. So for those of you here for a sensible list, here it is. Those people can leave, but you and I, we're not like them. We're intellectuals, we're connoisseurs of content. Those NPCs can have Halls of Atonement, we don't need it. In fact, we don't need any of these. Because I don't know how to break it to you, but I don't get to pick the keys. I, th my li this, this list doesn't matter. So let's indulge in just some freakish ideas and have some fun for a few minutes. Now, Blizzard has made my life easier by showing that they're willing to refurbish old dungeons that get added to the Mythic Plus pool. This means that we're allowed to fix some of the problems with these dungeons. So the amount of work each refurbished dungeon has received has varied from instance to instance, so we're going to make an objective, science-y scale. On the left we have Waycrest Manor, which didn't need much work at all really, just some surgical tweaks and a thorough tuning pass. On the right we have Throne of the Tides, which is a stealth remake. Almost everything is new, but it all feels like how you remember it. And let's throw some more dungeons on the table just to flesh it out. I can hear my cat throwing up in the other room. <sighs> Son of a bit. More of Souls. Now, More of Souls probably shouldn't be a controversial pick, but it's interesting to talk about. More of Souls is one of WoW's most memorable dungeons. It's awesome on its face, but it's even more impressive when put in context. Prior to Legion, it was universally accepted that dungeons were subservient to raids. Raids were the main event, with dungeons merely serving as a stepping stone. This meant that raids commanded the majority of production resources. Legion's keystone system would redefine WoW's endgame. Dungeon content would now occupy its own branch of WoW's progression. On the surface, that just means that dungeons drop better loot, but crucially, players would be experiencing these instances a lot more than previous expansions. Dungeons had never had the production value to indulge in true spectacle, and that would need to change. To illustrate what I mean, let's compare more of Souls and Grimrel Depot. They seem similar at a glance because of the whole vehicle thing, but beyond that there's no comparison. Grimrel Depot ends with you fist fighting a random orc, you kill her and are rewarded with a kind of nasty cutscene. Meanwhile, More of Souls ends with a showdown with Helia as she tears up the ship underneath you. High production value, sets up a future raid encounter, super thematically appropriate, all that good stuff. More of Souls wasn't a dungeon, it, it was a statement, as strange as that sounds. You know, we talk about how like the modern era of WoW began with Legion, and it was it was from like little things like this, like, you know, More of Souls represents a turning point in the development of World of Warcraft. It was where our present day truly began. And that's awesome. And yet More of Souls hasn't so much as been added into Legion Time Walking. Why? Well, the easy answer is to say that its legacy was tarnished by artifact power grinds. See, at the beginning of Legion, players subjected themselves to truly degenerate dungeon grinds, and More of Souls, with its 24 minute timer, is by far the shortest key ever made. This made more of Souls the keystone of choice for grinding, and the two became synonymous. Spreadsheets would measure artifact power in terms of the necessary more runs. That did tank the dungeon's perception for sure, but more of Souls is far from a perfect key. Its short length is a genuine issue. A 24 minute timer is short, but most runs were much faster. Some of the highest more runs ever came in under 20 minutes. It feels less like a keystone and more like an old challenge mode. The dungeons setting an environment are goaded, but the boss fights themselves have not aged well from a combat point of view, particularly the first two guys. They have the same problem as bosses in Darkheart Thicken and Blackrock Cold. Just too few abilities cast too infrequently. This is a universal theme for basically every boss pre, well, Dawn of the Infinite really. Dungeon bosses inherently feel a bit undercooked and they only get more raw the further back in time you go. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not a game designer, right? Like, look at me, but I, I have an idea because more of souls the whole plot's to do with like ferrying the souls of the damned right so what if we had 
like a particularly volatile soul that the players had to protect. And it was literally just a Halandris bomb, like not not a metaphoric mechanical, like it was the ghost of a Halandris bomb which we must carry through the instance. And if it detonates, the group instantly wipes. I, I have no problem at all with this. I can't imagine you have an issue with it. I think this solves all of the dungeon's issues. A, a 20 minute Halandris bomb gauntlet. That seems about right to me. I say, I say we do it. I say it's a slam dunk. On Kahet, the Old Kingdom. We already know that the War Within is going to feature the Nerubian, so On Kahet would be a perfect fit thematically. I thought I was being really clever when I had this idea, and then like a microsecond later, it occurred to me that we're definitely getting a Nerubian dungeon in the War Within. We only have the names to go off right now, but Old City is almost certainly a new take on On Kahet. So this idea is probably a bust. But honestly, man, I've become obsessed with how much potential this place has as a key. I never particularly liked Onka Head. In fact, on a bad day, I might even say I dislike this place, but goddamn if it isn't a triumph of level design. In terms of dungeon routing, it's in the Goldilocks zone. It's not a featureless sand pit, nor is it a linear hallway. You have a few deliberate forks in the road to choose from, and with the tech that's been developed over the years, your options to build a route here are truly insane. Just look at this room. Don't you just want to pull these 11 dudes and pop bloodlust? And if you're really freaky, there's seven more spiders we walked past to get here that can easily be plugged in as well. Or you can swing the complete other way and shroud all the way to the first boss without touching any trash. From there you can either make up the count in either of these side rooms or perhaps do additional trash here or here. If anything, this is probably too much freedom. Nothing in this instance has true sight, so rogues can run just completely unchecked through this place. So on that note, we want to give this place the full Throne of the Tides refurb. In 2024, this 5 second shadow blast is its just condescending really. Finally, we have the option to ship this place either with 4 or 5 bosses. When Blizzard re-released Everbloom, they cut Zeritact from the key. The difference here is that Zeritact was one of the worst fights of all time, while the mushroom guy here owns. Personally, I leave him in. This, this feels really weird to say out loud, but it feels almost like Onkahet was wasted in Wrath of the Lich King. Like, this dungeon was built with so much flexibility and so much, um, so much, sort of, players were so empowered to sort of do what they wanted with it and approach it however they liked. And yet, we, we used that freedom to cut the most efficient route through the dungeon. And it was the exact sort of behavior that the, the Keystone system was built to deter, right? Like, you know, it forces a mob count and make sure we do all the bosses and that sort of thing. I feel like Onkahet's best days might still be ahead of it if we make it into a Keystone. And that feels insane to say out loud but like I, that's that's what I, I sincerely believe that and it's strange Skolomance the new one I would argue that OG Skolomance is the only time WoW has truly embraced the horror genre Skolomance was WoW's first true and only horror maze it was claustrophobic and disorienting and this bloody heartbeat man thanks I hate it this makes for a dungeon that is fascinating to talk about, but do I think that the LFG system should drop five unsuspecting noobs into this place? I <laughs> No, no I do not. So Blizzard wisely made the decision to remake Skullamance and Mr. Pandaria. The remake deliberately toned down the horror elements of the original, they play up the School for Necromancers idea, but play it more for comedy. It's a lot less subtle. Look, it, it kind of sucks, but I get it, it's fine, it's fine. Beyond that, the remake did all the right things. Skolomance was a sprawling multi-level maze. The remake takes the most iconic rooms and staples them into a linear order. It sounds lame, but it did the job. The new Skolo isn't much smaller than the original, but simply removing the backtracking makes it feel so much tighter. On the whole, I like the updated Skolomance, but it was built with the old challenge mode system in mind. Skolo may be the best example of the subtle differences between Mythic Plus and the old challenge modes. Skolomance had a 19 minute gold timer, and it feels fast. In part, this is because almost all the trash in Skolo is gimmicky or weird. Like, it's quicker if I just show you the entirety of the first boss trash. That was 8 seconds. It took 8 seconds to engage the first boss. These Bone Weavers deeply suck and need a rework. The following trash is built around manipulating this damage amp and they basically kill themselves. And the board students might as well do nothing. And as I'll keep saying, the boss fights don't have enough going on. Each fight only really has one idea. All of this worked well in challenge modes, but they're red flags in keystones. For that reason, I think we need an extreme rework here. I think we pulled that 19 minute timer up to 30 to match a Taldazar. That would mean doing five bosses in 30 minutes. No other key is like that, but the speedrun vibe defines this dungeon, so I say we embrace it as a feature rather than a bug. The fights have to be fast, so they're allowed to be a little bit crap. New Upper Black Rock Spire. If I had one word to describe noobers, it would be forgettable. 
But to be fair, Blizzard didn't do this dungeon any favors. It is surprisingly inaccessible, even on normal mode. Like more, it also got overlooked for time walking. It's almost like Blizzard's ashamed of it or something. So I'm confident that most people have functionally no memory of this place, even from transmog runs. I say we leverage this. Do you remember that one movie where everyone forgets all about the Beatles except for that one guy who republishes all of their songs as his own? I propose something similar. If we re-release Noobers, most people won't even notice that it's old content. That part of the plan is flawless, but beyond that, we do have some problems. Mainly that Noobers sucks pretty hard. See, More of Souls has excellent production value and basically nothing else is worth preserving. Noobers has the opposite problem. There's value to be extracted, but it's all trapped within this 20 year old environment. Just like Skolomance, Ubers is massive, but unlike the remake of Skolomance, the new Ubers kept the same map. It is an enormous dungeon with a short timer. You move through this environment at a breakneck pace. As a consequence, the instance has a major problem with negative space. This place is empty. I would want to see this place re-envisioned like Motherload. Imagine this place just teeming with optional trash built to encourage big pulls. I want plus 20 no lever keys to look like MDI runs. Open this door, remove this boss RP, and we've immediately solved the most painful parts of this dungeon. The goal time for this key was 25 minutes, so we definitely need to pull that up. Noobers is a 5 boss dungeon, so if we bring in some other 5 boss dungeons to compare, I think 35 minutes feels reasonable. You know, I, I liken the WAD version of UBRS to like a, like, like, like a kitchen whose best quality is that it's cheap to rip out, if that makes any sense. If there are any property owners watching who will appreciate that. Um, it's almost, it's a blank slate that a smart designer can like impose modern keystone principles onto. And, and I think that's that's interesting because I think if, if done correctly, we end up with like a kind of bad lower Karazhan with orcs. And that, I, that sounds really exciting to me. And if you don't like the idea of a kind of bad lower car with orcs, maybe don't attend my birthday party this year. The, the joke there is that I'm going to have a birthday party, which will be akin to lower Karazhan with orcs. I don't know if that if that scans. The Black Rock Caverns. A surface level evaluation of Black Rock Caverns would tell you that it's just a bland cave. But, my friend, you cannot survey the depth of a cave from the surface. You have to go deeper. The dungeon is essentially a smuggling network. Deathwing carved out a passage between the major continents and his Twilight cultists are using it to travel back and forth and cause mischief. Cataclysm was all about blending iconic WoW imagery into something new, and this place is a great example of that. The tunnels are evocative of the Molten Core, which lends a lot of orange to the colour palette. The Twilight Hammer are all various shades of purple, and this is all taking place inside the Black Rock Mountain, so we get a lot of Dark Iron Dwarf architecture. So what ought to be a generic cave actually does have a unique visual identity. You can pick Black Rock Caverns out of a lineup. I particularly adore this image of the Nether Drake hanging from the ceiling. It looks great in trailers, and it looks great 14 years later. Since both were Cataclysm dungeons, we'll put Black Rock Caverns alongside Throne on our refurb spectrum, but really, I think this dungeon is in better shape than Throne was. Again, the bosses all have solid core ideas, but would need a lot of supporting material. One major challenge with this place is what to do about Raz the Crazed. The group frees Raz after the first boss, and he goes on a rampage clearing out elite Twilight cultists and that sort of thing. Raz has always been buggy, like here he is bugging out while I gather footage. As much fun as Raz is in concept, I think the best solution here is the boring one. Minimize his influence, make him passive, and remove any trash that he's expected to kill. It sucks, but it's preferable to the inevitable jank that would result if we kept him as is. Now, the last matter to address is the topic of Cataclysm Classic, which we will likely see well before The War Within comes out. Cata players will have run this place a lot by Season 1 of The War Within. Honestly, that sounds like a you problem. This idea is awesome and definitely happening, so consider this you notice. King's Rest. Now wait, before you freak out, just, just hear me out for a second. The first dungeon that I want to put here is King's Rest. Just just hear me out for a second. We are now sitting at a combined total of 88 deaths in this dungeon. Let it be known for the record books. I don't think we'll ever see something like this again. Maybe. I get it. I know. They're going to deploy this. No, I, I mean, at this point, we just have to call the local authorities because there's a mass slaughter going on right now between these two teams from uh, Shadow of Zul. He has just taken names. King's Rest was notorious in BFA, particularly in the expansion's early life. In Season 2, the highest King's Rest key was a full three levels lower than the overall highest key. Because here's the thing. I know how to make King's Rest good. We nerf it. A lot. Because the issue was always tuning. Uh, King's Rest has been overtuned for more than a year now in Mythic Plus. I know a lot of you dislike King's Rest, but I think, again, that's because of how higher scaling Mythic Plus scaled it. 
Over the course of the expansion, we saw King's Rest slowly close the gap between it and the rest of the BFA dungeon set. I think what it needs is a really good shooting pass and a few specific annoyances addressed. For instance, the RP method of corpse running should be replaced with the more traditional spawn point. The Four Kings Gauntlet here is fairly iconic, I guess, but I would overhaul it. Shadow of Zul was stupidly overtuned. Blizzard was big into nasty final trash pulls in BFA, and Zul was the most unhinged version of that. He needs a baseball cap to the knees. And it's worth remembering that King's Rest was particularly sensitive to certain affixes. Like these little minions were fine, until bolstering week where this happened. <laughs> I'll, I'll pull the mobs because otherwise they will travel to the other side. A few moments later. The fuck, how do you get so big? Ah, uh, the bolstering. So you don't have to spend a lot of time trapping. Uh, I got me lead for one million. There was a ton of this sort of thing. The nerfs to bolstering, bursting and so on all represent nerfs to King's Rest. Like, when I first put this key on the list, I thought I was being really contrarian, but the more time passes, the less controversial this feels. King's Rest is a modern, high-quality dungeon that was hamstrung by a few very specific things. With the benefit of hindsight and a do-over, there's no reason this can't return to the rotation. And if King's Rest comes back and is dramatically overtuned, well, that's... that's what skillcap.com's for, baby. A common critique of King's Rest is that it's overly linear, and, you know, sure, I'll, I'll pay that, but, like, what do you expect? We can't just keep re-releasing Freehold over and over again. Unless... Freehold. I know what you're thinking. We just had Freehold, it's been like four months, that's way too soon to re-release it. I have two things to say to that. One, the war within is still like six months away, so it'll be ten months. And second, go four months without calling your grandma, and then try telling her that it hasn't been that long. It is all relative. Freehold should get another season in the war within. Because really, why should we limit ourselves to only one revival tour of these dungeons? The dungeons that have been re-released were chosen specifically because they were the greatest keystones of all time. Freehold has stood the test of time. The elephant in the room here is that we're running out of good keys to re-release. My list from earlier isn't exactly brimming with first round picks, guys. Put another way, do you want to do Freehold again, or would you rather a re-release of Shrine of the Storm? I know which one I want. Now, I admit that Freehold is a cowardly pick. In fact, it's a very uninspired way to approach Mythic Plus. So let's end with my most insane but most sincere pick. The Steam Vault. The Steam Vault is old. It is a max level dungeon from the Burning Crusade. Dungeons like Shadowman Burial Ground felt old in Season 1, and it's a spring chicken at age 10 compared to the Steam Vault 17 years of age. So off the rip, we're going to need as much refurbishing as we can get away with. But I think it's worth it, because I really do believe there's an excellent key here. What's the plot? The Naga is stealing water to swim in it or something. We're here to disrupt the pumps. Doesn't matter. In terms of layout, it is a three boss dungeon where the two bosses must be killed in order to open the door to the final boss. This first area is analogous to keys like Salia's Gambit or Halls of Atonement, dungeons that begin with large open spaces before becoming linear later on. You have about five flavors of Naga in various groups that litter the room. Big fungal giants surround you with groups of water elementals patrolling the center path. Similar to Onkahet, the Steam Vault was built to be open-ended, but players naturally found an efficient route that bypassed as much trash as possible. In this case, players ended up hugging walls and missing a lot of sculpted sightlines. Like, this dungeon is perhaps best remembered for this primitive tech where players could, like, swim around the back of the dungeon and emerge like the intro to Metal Gear Solid. It's a unique concept, but it's indicative of how we made boring decisions in the name of ease and efficiency. If this would get remade today, I'd treat it like a Thrones Elevator and add like a scripted boat ride or something to speed it up while keeping the route open. Occasionally we'll see discussions on Twitter about turning these ancient dungeons into keys, like the Shattered Halls did the rounds a while back. But due to its layout, I genuinely believe that the Steam Vault is the only TBC dungeon that could really excel as a key. Again, it would need love unlike any refurbished dungeon before it, like personally I would go so far as to add a fourth boss encounter, right here. One of those big brutes whose main gimmick would be area denial, think Blightbone or Chromacar, a fight that just needs like a lot of space for you to deal with it and encourages you to clean out this room. These bosses are so basic that they aren't really worth talking about, but I think the setting provides an interesting basis for a lot of these fights. I think you could do some interesting things making a modern boss in a room this small. We haven't seen a Lepinome encounter in I don't even know how long. And this guy, or I'll, I'll be honest, I've got nothing. He's a random Naga warlord. Whatever, they can't all be winners. So at this point you may be asking the obvious question, why? Why should so much dev time be devoted to an update of the bloody Steam Vault versus... Like a lot of you, I'm a big supporter of video game preservation. I agreed with the philosophy of a hashtag no changes classic because it would ensure that vanilla WoW was preserved in a pure form. When TBC Classic released, I went back into the Steam Vault ready to have a dose of nostalgia, and it didn't hit the same. How could it? 
The instance is old. It was made for an audience on dial-up internet. It was made for a world that doesn't exist anymore. Preservation is not the same thing as relevance. We have preserved the original Scholomance, but we do so for the benefit of art scholars and weirdos. The remake of Scholomance and UBRS were big and showy. They were an attempt to fix a perceived flaw in the original dungeon. They were too old, too long, or too boring. It's not impressive that Blizzard remade Throne of the Tides for Season 3 of Dragonflight. What's impressive is that they didn't. Most players did not appreciate the extent of the changes made to Throne, and because all the changes felt right. The dungeon was given a renewed relevance without disrupting the essence of the dungeon. Radical, yet subtle. We can mourn the loss of the original Skullamance, but it's very hard to mourn the loss of the original Throne of the Tides. Because what have we lost exactly? Oh, oh no, Kid's Tale will never know what it's like for this hallway to be weirdly empty. What we may have missed in our pursuit of hashtag no changes is that maybe it's okay to admit that the Steam Vault is too lame to enjoy in 2024, and that intelligent designers with a deft hand can bring these experiences back into relevance without losing what made them resonate in the first place. I, I want to go off script just for a second and just like. A lot of the people in my life right now are going through some flavor of midlife crisis, and it's coming from weird places. It's coming from seeing the careers of YouTubers. It's coming from, you know, uh, my, my my fiance had to do cross country. She's, she's a teacher and assigned to do cross country. So she's being introspective about her old school because she's assigned to do cross country. And, and you know, I, I, I thought I was above it all, but the Steam Vault has triggered like my own sort of midlife crisis, you know, these, these memories of doing it as a child. Um, so this idea of like introspection versus versus full-blown uncritical nostalgia has sort of been at the back of my mind recently um and so to to see you know the throne of the tides and and vortex pinnacle and like these dungeons get get these these very tasteful refurbishes it just has me sort of conceptualizing art a little bit differently it's sort of i'm trying to articulate now i don't know if it's worked at all but there's something there's something beautiful about it you know to, to sound like a complete wanker for a second there's something that i've found i found profound about this idea of uh, you know like maybe these dungeons like that, that we celebrate the artistry that we celebrate um is uh, is not so rigid that it has to remain untouched there's no way that's all making it into the video right that's that's getting cut right that was good though. Maybe I'll just leave it in. Put another way, we aren't re-releasing Onka Head because our best days are behind us. We're doing it because our best days are still ahead. Because, to be honest, this list of dungeons doesn't excite me. This list of keys represents a kind of creative stagnation. World of Warcraft is not developed by civil engineers. Uh, I do not want them making safe choices. If we must be re-releasing dungeons like this, I want to use the opportunity to do something interesting, something bold. You know, like making players lug around a Halandra's bomb for the entirety of more of so I'm telling you, it's a good idea. You just you don't understand it. Just once you see it, it'll make sense. Just greenlight the project and we'll we'll deal with the particulars later. Hi, you made it to the end of the video and there is a man mowing right over the fence. So I will not linger here too long. Um, what did you make of that? That was that was a weird video, right? Um Obviously, that was like you know deliberate shock to the system here. Very different video from Skill Capped. Um, we want to pivot the voice of the channel just a, a little bit, and um, uh, and the goal was to try something very different to sort of like gauge reaction. So, what did you make of me as a voice talent? What did you make of these on camera segments? Um, was that any good? Um, we want to make stuff that people want to watch, obviously. So, if people didn't enjoy that, if you didn't enjoy that, um, we want to know. So, please uh, don't 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 be horrible. <laughs> Don't don't bully me on the internet, but um, but please, you know, honest opinions of things. So um, so we can't get out of here without doing a quick shout out to Skillcap.com. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on over there in the run up to season four and and the War Within in particular. I'm very excited to see all that stuff bear fruit. Um, but for the moment, there's this enormous back catalog of season three stuff to work through. Um, and they're doing this little extra offer where if you sign up now, you get a a free VOD review with a pro player every month. Um, which if you know anything about coaching, that's that's kind of uh. It's kind of an insane offer. I don't know how they're making that work, but um, uh, just to be clear, I'm not one of the pro players. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. They've got um, they've got actual experts you get to sit down with. Um, but but Brian, if you're watching this, how do you how do you make that work? How do you square that circle? Because that doesn't the math doesn't check out for me. Uh, have a good night.